Hello and welcome to City Church. It's nearly Christmas, and for me, Christmas is like an onion. Because there's lots of layers. Right at the centre, it's about the birth of Jesus. But around that, there's, there's a story of that birth, of Mary and Joseph, Bethlehem, wise men and shepherds and angels. And then around that, there's what the church does at Christmas. There's Advent, there's carols, there's the nine lessons, all that wonderful stuff that the church does around Christmas. And then around that, there's, there's the other thing, the other traditions that have grown up around Christmas, the things that happen at this time. Christmas trees, Christmas cards, Father Christmas, snow, Christmas jumpers, even Christmas shirts with flamingos on them. But today we're going to look at the, the story of the birth of Jesus. And, and that mostly comes from the book of Luke. There's these four Gospels, as we know, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Mark and John say nothing about the birth of Jesus, nothing about the childhood of Jesus. They just crash straight in with Jesus as an adult. Luke and Matthew both have accounts of the birth of Jesus. And they are, they are really quite different. Matthew's account seems to have Mary and Joseph as newly married and living in Bethlehem. And then after the birth of Jesus, they have the wise men visit. And then they flee to Egypt because Herod had ordered the slaughter of the baby boys. And then sometime later, they return to Israel. And at that point, they decided to settle in Nazareth. It's quite a different account from the one we have in Luke, which, on which most of our tradition is, is based. Luke has them starting in Nazareth as an unmarried couple, travelling down to Bethlehem to register for this census, finding no room at the inn. You know the story. And actually, the one thing that really is, is, bor is borrowed from Matthew or brought into it is the, is the piece about the wise men. Luke's account... It does raise a lot of questions. Um, why was Joseph living in Nazareth? Had, had he moved there as an adult? It's quite a long way away. Nazareth was up in the north of the country. If he'd moved there as an adult, then surely when he came back, he'd have just stayed with his folks. If they'd moved there a generation or two before, then, then surely there would, there would have been this big train of people coming back. Uh, and they'd still have had extended family to go and stay with. So... And why would the census want people to register in a completely different place from where they live and work? There's a lot of questions that, that aren't really answered by this story. Nevertheless, this is the story. Um, and most of the, the tradition we have is based on that story. So we're going to look a little bit at that story and, and really at the central event, the core of the onion, uh, which is the birth of Jesus. And at that point, one thing we think we can say about Mary is that she would have been really, really tired. She would have been exhausted. She's just given birth to her firstborn child. And whether or not she'd had to travel down from Nazareth heavily pregnant, she'd been through labour, she would have been really tired. It's the event of her lifetime. It's the event of the century. It's the, it's the event of history so far. And she would have been exhausted. And I guess the message that I get from this is, it's okay to be tired. When there's big events that are put on, quite often there's people who put a lot of energy in ahead of the event to help make it happen, just like Mary would have done. And it's okay to be tired when there's a big event. And actually there's quite a few tired people in the Bible. There's a story when Jesus calmed the storm out on the, the, the Sea of Galilee. And as the storm was, was rising, Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the boat. Now, this wasn't some, I will show them through faith by being asleep. He would have been tired. One of the Old Testament prophets, Zechariah, he fell asleep while God was talking to him. People are tired, and that's okay to be tired. You don't have to pretend you're not tired if you're tired. 
The opposite end of the spectrum is the angels. The angels are so excited. The shepherds are out on the hills and one angel comes to the shepherds to tell them what's happening. And then the other angels, they cannot contain themselves. They all appear and they are praising and they are singing because they're really excited. They know what's happened and they are incredibly excited. Children do excited really well. Adults, we have to rein it in. Part of our culture is that we rein in our excitement. But we can get excited and it's okay to get excited. I remember when, when for Hannah's eighth birthday, uh, we went to uh, Disneyland Paris and, and walking in for the first time, two small children, they were so excited. Walking in for the first time as a grown man, I was so excited. But whereas the kids were sharing it, I was buttoning it all in because we don't show our excitement. But I was thrilled. Claire, my wife, she doesn't do theme parks. Claire's going, where are the bins? I don't have to carry my rubbish all day. Are the bins? Where are the toilets? Where's somewhere I can sit down? Can I get a coffee? Me, I'm just thrilled to pieces. A, a year or so ago, a group of us from the church went down to Newport. Uh, to the velodrome in Newport to have a taster session at track cycling. And again, I was so excited for this, but you can't show it because you're an adult. But actually, it should be okay to show we're excited. It definitely should be okay to say, look, I'm really excited about this. I can't wait. So next time you're feeling excited, don't feel you have to button it up. Just be free to show that excitement because it's okay to be excited. You know, my children, when they were little, they got excited. When they became teenagers, again, the, the, the culture starts kicking in and they stop showing their excitement. And that's the point where we got a dog. So that when I come home from work, there's still someone in the house who's really excited to see me and isn't afraid to show it. So that's Mary on the one hand, tired. Angels on the other hand, really excited. But the third, the third person who's arrived, key, key to talk about it this time, is Jesus. Jesus has arrived as a baby. And this is something that I really, really cannot get my head round. That this baby, at the same time as having all the attributes of a human baby, was also God Almighty. The creator God of the universe at the same time, in, in an infant baby. You know, we can think about the adult Jesus as being God Almighty as well. The adult Jesus as knowing himself also to be God and to have that communion with the Godhead. And I guess the difference, well, that's enough of a mystery as it is, let's be honest. But one of the key differences is that Jesus as an adult would have been self-aware which raised the, you know, which raised the question, at what point would this baby, child, baby, toddler, infant, kindergarten age, child, have become self-aware and realised who he is, not just as a human, but as, as God? Um, Luke, actually, the, the next passage after the birth, for me, is really instructive because it's Jesus as a 12-year-old. Um, and it's, it's the opposite of home alone. It's left on holiday, alone. Um, the family have gone to Jerusalem for the Passover. Jesus is 12 years old. And they leave him behind. They're travelling home and they go, where is he? Oh, I thought he was with you. Oh, no, no, no. Um, so they go back to, to find him in the temple. And he says to them, surely you'd know I would be in my father's house. And so for me, that's really important because... It indicates that he has this awareness of who he is as a 12-year-old, which is before his 13th birthday, which, as we know, in the Hebrew culture, in Hebrew tradition, was the age you become an adult. So some point between naught and 12, so naught, I'm thinking, Spencer. I want shaky ground here with children and their ages. I think 
I think Ben is one, about to be two. We can think of older children, um, like Hector and Miles and Denver. Somewhere on this range, Jesus became self-aware. I find it, I, I really struggle to, to, to think that as a baby he could have known that. But at some point he became self-aware. And one of the things that we rejoice on is that God actually put himself through that journey. He didn't turn up as an adult and go, bish, bash, boss, let's sort out this redemption thing and it'll all be sorted. But actually, before we get there, he went through human experience. Which means that as an adult, he could empathise much more with, with what humanity is like, that actually he was born to a family of, I'm going to say of no consequence, but you know what I mean. He was born to a family of little or no consequence in a country that was subjugated by an occupying power. And he grew up in that and lived through that. And so that's a really important aspect of, of the birth of Jesus, of the story of Jesus, that he didn't just appear. I mean, I remember when Jonah Lomu first appeared on the international rugby scene and everyone's gone, wow, who is this? You could say the same about, you know, there's been a few sportsmen who have, the very first time you heard of them, they were incredible. Um, Usain Bolt is another one. But what we, we don't have that with Jesus. We have that he came as a baby and, and, and was grown up and came through that. And what would he have known about his birth? As I say, I don't think he would have been self-aware. So, so he probably would have known nothing about this event as it happened. And sometimes there are those events in life which are so important but we don't realise it at the time. It's only much, much later that we can look back and go, that was the key event. That's what happened. And do you know what? If that happens, it's OK. God's, God knows what he's doing. He's in control. So we've talked a little bit about the arrival. We've talked about Mary being tired. We've talked about the angels being excited. We've talked about Jesus. The centre of it all probably wouldn't even have known much about it because that's what happens when babies are born. So this Christmas, if you're tired, it's OK to be tired and it's OK to acknowledge that you're tired. If you're excited, brilliant. Let it all out. It's good to be excited. And sometimes things will happen and you don't realise how important or valuable they were until later. And again, that's OK. So I'll leave you there with those, those little messages. Have a great Christmas and I really look forward in the new year to meeting all of you face to face again. Amen.